Hey everybody, welcome to this 49th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. It is I, Drew Bloom, your host. I'd like to personally thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. Friday Fruit Clips, of course, is my award-winning, critically acclaimed weekly YouTube series, which is seen all over the world. I think it's translated into what, like 40 different languages, something like that. I'll have my accountant check on that. Either way, we expose the false prophets, the false teachers, those that would corrupt the Word of God and teach doctrines of devils. Our hope is that some of these followers would awaken and come back to the truth of Jesus Christ and back to sound doctrine. Now, Ephesians 5.11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather prove them. And that's what we're going to do here today. That's what we do every week at Friday Fruit Clips. So, I've got a couple of clips picked out. We're going to watch these, and we're going to comment. Now, you might hear something funny, because some of it is ridiculous, and you might get pretty angry, because a lot of this is blasphemous. Either way, we're going to expose this. So, if you're ready, grab yourself some popcorn, Get your favorite beverage. We're going to pop that first tape into the VCR and we are off and running. You ready? Let's do this. All right, so first up, we've got Troy Black. Now, Troy Black, I'd call him the Leave It to Beaver of Internet False Prophets. His shtick is to crinkle up his puppy dog eyebrows and you know, just kind of flash his boyish charm and sort of act like he's just a humble neighbor kid who has this talent for prophecy. But he doesn't. He is a confirmed false prophet many times over, and he has proven with no uncertainty that he does not fear the living God. He lies with spectacular frequency in the name of Jesus Christ, and he sleeps like a baby at night. And today we're looking at this video. Look at the title, What God Told Me About Kate Middleton, Prophetic Word. Now, I want you to remember that, first of all, it's laughable, just because, well, we watched Kate Middleton come out last week and announce to the world that she's battling cancer, and then just like that, Troy gets a word from God. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it has nothing to do with the timing, I'm sure. but. Always pay attention to how Troy words his titles. What he actually says verbatim, what God told me. All right, we're going to come back to that in just a second. So we're going to listen to the beaver here, and we're going to see what incredible word he got from God Almighty. Roll that first clip. But what I heard the Lord say is he said this. He said, Kate Middleton. And, and he said, some people, and I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, I, I, you know, I didn't look that up, but. All right, so Troy just stated that he hopes that he pronounced Kate Middleton's last name correctly. That's an amazing statement. Let's take a look at that. All right, here's the last name. Hmm. Well, I can certainly see where Troy had reason to be concerned. That's a whopper of a tough last name, super tough. Uh, he may have really dropped the ball and. Well, he could have pronounced it Middleton. That's a possibility. That would have been embarrassing. Or, if he wasn't careful, he may have pronounced it Middlewagam. I don't know. It's so hard. Anything is possible. Or what if he would have pronounced it Middle Twinkie? <laughs> that could have happened. It would have been so embarrassing. Anyway, the struggle is real, and we feel for Troy. But we breathe a breath of relief that, Troy, you pronounced the last name correctly, so you may continue. Um, but he, he said, some people are saying to themselves, this is what they get. And I believe he's talking about the royals, right? And he said, and he said they're saying, this is what God put on their family. And then I heard the Lord say this. He said, but that's not the way I work. I didn't give her cancer, and I don't give that to people. That's not the way I work. So absolutely astonishing prophecy, astonishing word from the Lord concerning Kate Middleton that Troy had to make a video about. 139,000 views. 
Troy says, well, God says he doesn't give people cancer, which, by the way, that is a whole nother video. Biblical plagues and stuff. But this was the word of the Lord, according to Troy. Now, I want you to remember something. These types of words, right, these types of alleged prophecies, they're never, ever, ever put out before the headline news. It's always after. Always after. And, of course, none of Troy's followers can even process that pattern. But what can we say? It continues. But I want you to listen to what Troy says next concerning his alleged prophetic word from God Almighty. Listen. Y'all, this is a prophetic message I heard from the Lord. Uh, please pray about it. Please, if you disagree with this message, please go study the scriptures and see what the word of God has to say. What do you say? Pray about it? If you disagree, go study the scriptures and see what God has to say? About what? What did he even say? He really didn't say anything about Kate Middleton. And it's clear that he's clickbaiting here. He's clickbaiting his gullible viewers. But, you know, folks, here's the thing. He knows that there is no one who can measure his alleged dopey fake prophecy. You can't measure that nonsense. Study the scriptures to determine if that word was true. I, I don't think I need to study the scriptures for that. Good old common sense will tell you that Beaver here is an absolute opportunist who clickbaits for views. He grabs headlines and makes video. And again, remember, it's always after the fact. Folks, this man, or I should say this boy, is evil. He so effortlessly lies in the name of the most powerful being in existence on an almost daily basis. Take a look at this verse. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, look at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This is Troy Black to a T. So Troy Black, one of the most innocent looking, I guess, false prophets out there, but absolutely devastating in his ministry of lies. And he portrays himself as some great prophet, again, while he looks so innocent. He often cries, too. That helps his cause. People feel that he's just so emotional and, you know, just loves God so much. But make no mistake, this man does not love God. How could any man consistently lie in the name of Jesus Christ and love him at the same time? It, it's nonsensical. It's confusion. So he just continues to put out videos where he absolutely proclaims, you know, that God told him, fill in the blank, all these prophecies, right? And it's clear that God has told him nothing. So mark this devil and avoid him at all cost. He is not innocent. He is one of these false prophets that Jesus warned you about. Let's move on to our next segment. All right, now on the next segment, I first saw this on Revealing Truth channel here. So I want to give a shout out to Sean. This is Robert Morris. Now, Robert Morris is one of the greediest evangelists out there, period. It seems every clip I've ever seen from this guy, he's always preaching about tithing. Tithing this, tithing that. That's all I ever see this guy doing. He is so utterly greedy. He chastises parishioners about tithing. He's in the past stated things like non-tithers are opening up portals to allow demons through, or you're, you're cursed if you don't tithe, just all kinds of nonsense. And he is relentless in trying to squeeze tithes out of anybody that will pay this guy any sort of attention. It is just dastardly. And today is no different. We're going to watch a clip where he twists scripture to deceive the listeners into believing that, well, the New Testament teaches tithing. But here's the thing. It doesn't. 
So we want to do our part to expose and debunk this greedy man. Let's roll that first clip. Let me ask you a question, all right? If Jesus himself, if Jesus himself said you ought to tithe, would you tithe? Okay, well, I'm going to go ask these people over here. Y'all in? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let me ask all of you, okay? Campuses, all the churches. If Jesus himself said you ought to tithe, would you tithe? Yes. Okay. Here's the sad part. Some of us still have to think about it. That the one that bled and died on the cross, if he said you ought to give 10%, we still have to think about it. You know, folks, right there, that is so very disturbing. It makes me physically ill. Citing Jesus Christ's shedding of blood and dying for our sins as a reason for you to tithe your money to him is nothing less than appalling. It's just disgusting. Okay. So let me put it another way. Matthew 23, 23, Jesus is speaking. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe, 10%, of mint, anise, and cumin. Those are spices. And have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. Watch very carefully. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. In Matthew 23, where Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, they were still under the law. There was no New Testament yet. There was no new covenant yet. Furthermore, Jesus is chastising the Pharisees for being unjust, unmerciful, unfaithful. This had nothing to do with you know, the Pharisees giving 10% of their money to wherever. This guy is so deceptive. And look at him. Look how he treats his audience, his parishioners, like they're just mindless children. He's so condescending, it is so alarming. But the fact of the matter is, there is nothing in the New Testament which requires us to tie. Now, this guy wants you to believe that. Oh, look at him. He is just so sickening. There's so much evil coming through this guy. There's nothing in the New Testament. If you want to give, by all means, give as God leads you. Absolutely. If you want to tithe, tithe. Absolutely. Wonderful. Glory to God. But by golly, do not let greedy, selfish frauds guilt you into giving 10% of your money to them be, just because they're good at butchering scripture. Watch this. Look at this verse. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, Peter's talking about false prophets and false teachers. Look at verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. These false teachers, they're going to use, they're going to use fiend words. They're going to make merchandise of you because they have such a lust for covetousness. That's all that a guy like Robert Morris can think of. All right, so as we close down this segment, have a look at this. Robert Morris is worth about $117 million. Wow. 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 Now, you think you'd be content with that, right? But see, that's the thing when it comes to greed. It's never enough. Also, Jesus Christ isn't enough for Robert. This man lives only to use the name of Jesus Christ to get richer and richer and richer. Just amazing. Robert, if you're listening, you need to repent, sir. How about preaching on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Why don't we just go ahead and give the tithing thing a rest, pal? You have more money than you'll ever be able to spend. So with that, let's move on to the next segment. 
Certainly mark and avoid this man. All right, so next up we've got, well, check it out. He's staring at you. Please don't look at me like that. That's right, it's Robin Bullock, a.k.a. Tombstone, a.k.a. the ketchup sandwich eating, effeminate hair scrunchy wearing false prophet from Warrior, Alabama. Today, he's going to... I was going to read a little bit from his resume. You know that all these false prophets, right, they brag about themselves. They read their resumes. They tell outrageous stories about their so-called experiences. And today's no different. Tombstone's going to tell us about, well, when God came and found him as a child. Roll that clip. But anyway, I was laying there one night and this light flashed around the room. Man, I'm looking around that. I come wide awake. And my grandmother's over against that wall asleep. I'm over here asleep. I seen that light, and then I opened my eyes, and it just started going around the room. What was odd is that house didn't, all the windows were plastic over. And we never opened them. Very rare one of them opened. And so there was nothing in the house to reflect Nothing could come through windows. And I look over there at my grandmother, and this light come around the room. It looked to be about like that, just like you'd take a flashlight and turn it on right close to a wall. And it just came right over her head and just stopped. Well, I'm staring at this thing, and I'm looking at it. And, man, you're talking about afraid. Now, I was trembling. I just a boy. And I looked over there, and I called my grandmother Mama, because she helped raise us, and I, I was trying to say mama, but I was too afraid. to. T I, I was so afraid I couldn't get a word out. <laughs> she w couldn't hear me, had her back to me, and I reached my leg out. That's how small the room was, and I kicked her bed. And she woke up, ah, oh, what? And I pointed at that light. And she just set up. Now, my grandmother wasn't afraid of hell, man. I mean, listen now, you just don't know. And she set up and looked at that light and rubbed it with her hand. So she just got up and went all around the house to be sure nothing was reflecting and there wasn't anything. She, this was her words. Well, let's just go back to sleep. I thought, yeah, you do. I'm not. And I look over at that light and all of a sudden this one circle broke into two little ones. And started doing like this, moving side to side. Man, I mean, I've got, I've got that cover up. And it finally just faded away. And I asked the Lord years later, I was thinking of that. I was preaching one time. And I said in myself, Lord, what was that? He said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the earth searching for someone to show himself strong in. And I came up on that old hill that night looking for you. That's why it was on that wall staring at me. And yes, folks, that's exactly how it happened. God came up on that old hill and he came looking for Robin. True story. Honest, it's true. Well, we know the rest is history. Look at him. I imagine it would just be a short time afterwards where maybe God found Robin again and that's when he brought him his leather prophet trench coat, right? Then later, God brought him his Walmart eagle cane. But something was still missing. What? <gasps> Nothing compares to what came next, folks. Maybe when God brought Robin his hair scrunchie to complete his look, the modern-day super prophet being born, oh, my goodness, and the fans go wild. All, all power was transferred from the heavenly realms to Robin Bullock. And, of course, we're being silly. This is all nonsense. Robin is a confirmed false prophet, and quite frankly, he's a cult leader. He is a gypsy swindler. Ab, his whole family just swindlers and so we are poking some fun at him at his expense uh, this man is not to be feared uh, tombstone is actually ridiculous in his storytelling 
And I'm sure, you know, his fans loved his little fake story. Um, but notice it's always them. It's always these prophets that are telling you the stories about themselves. So they're reading their resume to you, and it's just silly. But nevertheless, you might not have ever heard how God Almighty came up on that little old hill looking for Robin Bullock. Just amazing. Super profit extraordinary. Anyway, just a short one for you today. We're going to leave that there, and we are going to move on to our final segment. All right, next up, we've got notorious false prophet Passion Java. And what's going on? Wait, wait a second. Uh, my staff is playing pranks on me. That's not, that's not Passion Java. That's Liberace. All right, hold on a second. All right. All right, like I said, next up, we've got Notorious False Prophet Passion. Guys, all right, so that's Liberace again. All right, well, heads are going to roll on this. All right, let's try this again. Notorious, oh, look, at, uh, would you guys knock it off? This is ridiculous. We've got Liberace again. All right, get my staff in here. All right, I think we've got the real Passion Java. Here we go. There he is, Notorious and confirmed False Prophet. All around mocker of God Almighty, Passion Java. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Also known as 50% of the Milli Vanilli of false prophets. Lovey Elias being the other 50%. Get a load of this guy, right? He's got all his clothes coming from the estate sale of Liberace, no doubt. Passion Java has made it his life goal to be the king of blasphemy. I think he wants to outdo anyone and everyone when it comes to stirring up the anger of the Lord. Right? I don't recall Elijah, Jeremiah being dressed like this, but I could be wrong. No, I don't think so. He's in California. He's preaching to a multitude of brainwashed cult followers who would rather worship men than God. Now, Java knows this. That's why he doesn't even try to hide his flaunt. He's gotten his sheep so dumbed down that he can openly live his life in direct opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his followers will just believe him over the Bible. They don't bother to read the Bible. They just follow everything that this guy says. It's really quite amazing. We're going to listen to a clip or two from this fraud and we're going to comment as we go. Play that first clip. Then there are prophets. This time is not time for any other office, but I speak in my office. It's time for the prophetic. And the problem with prophets... 99% of prophets, they are not learned. They are not intellect. That's why they dress good. Because they are empty on the inside. They have to package the outside to be received. Because I got no PhD. I got no doctrine. I got no diploma. All I got is just a prophetic word. Thus says the Lord. You know, it's amazing. The crowd cheers and they scream. And look, at they, they just love their rock star here. Now, you heard what Passion Java said. He admits that he's got no doctrine. And I, I really want to be fair because he may have actually been trying to say doctorate, like a degree, but I'm going to address him as though he meant to say doctrine, because really that's where we can always prove with ease that this guy is the absolute enemy of our living God. We come over to the book of 2 John, chapter 1, we're going to scroll down. Look at verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. It is because he does not abide in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, that this clown is able to parade up on stage in expensive costume suits 
with sequins and teach unscriptural mumbo jumbo while receiving the praises of men. He does not abide in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And these people, trust me, they're not here for Jesus Christ. They're not here for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No, they're here to watch their hero pass out psychic readings to the gullible, to the simple, to the lustful people who have long since abandoned sound doctrine. This event is nothing more than a godless celebration. It's a party which is void of the truth of Jesus Christ. All right, so now we get to the part of the show where the people come up. The people come up, they get a chance to meet their rock star. They get a chance to be, you know, slain in the spirit. I would kind of call this part, well, first of all, look at her. She's absolutely smitten. She is getting a chance to meet her rock star. Just, it's so sad. Um, but I would liken this to, like, the Matrix, like Neo push power. Or, or maybe you've seen like the uh, uh, contactless kung fu pushing and, you know, all this, you know, spiritual stuff. It is just ridiculous. And, you know, Levy Pash, I'm sorry, what, what am I calling him? Levy, I'm, I'm getting it mixed up. Pash in Java it has a history of slaying people in the spirit in different ways, in crazy, weirdo ways. Like he shimmies people down to the ground. He does like dance moves. We're going to watch a little bit of this just so you can really get uh, an idea of, of what he does. And this is what the people come to see. See the way that she's looking at him as though he has God in him. And he doesn't. He is selling a product and that product is him. But this is all void of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there she goes. There she goes. That's what she paid the big money for. So she got her money's worth, I guess, in her mind. But. Either way, let's uh, let's have a little fun. Let's watch a montage. Let's watch some of this uh, martial arts uh, combination, uh, contactless uh, matrix type stuff. Here we go. It's got double dose of the anointing. I release the anointing, Lord. I give you the power in the mighty name of Jesus. Rika, pa, 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 Well, we definitely want to give a shout out and a thanks to Eddie Murphy there. Um, okay, so Passion Jabba. Mark and avoid this man. He is not of God. And while you're at it, uh, Mark and avoid Lovey Elias as well as Daniel Adams. They These men are not of God. Um, and boy, are they in for a world of fear when they stand before God and give an account for these ridiculous stage acts which they try to pass off as ministry. It's just unbiblical nonsense. So, all right, so with that, we conclude these segments. Well, folks, that is going to do it for this 49th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I sure do thank you for stopping by. Please remember to pray for these false prophets. Pray for the followers Pray mightily that God would open their eyes and bring them out of all this silliness, all this delusion, all this corruption. It is just so bad. I also want to invite you to support my work here. 
my channel is not monetized. So if you do want to help this ministry, please do so. Become a Patreon. That is a great way to help my ministry continue to expose the wolves and preach the gospel. Right down in the description, you can find everything there. And I sure do thank you. And, okay, well, my staff is waiting at the door. They are ready to go home. They're telling me that the credits are queued and they are ready to roll. So, let me hit the lights here. I'm going to set the alarm. And look at that. We've got another episode in the can. Wow. It goes by so fast. All right. Well, anyway, until next week, folks, never forget to always make sure and stay fruity. Sound good? Sound good? Sounds really good to me. So stay fruity, folks. We'll see you next week.